So in this video, I wanted to go over what seeds I'm going to be starting uh, this for this spring and summer. Now, I just have a small garden, so actually most of these I'm going to sell to the community. And um, we're going to start with tomatoes. In the years past, um, I really focused on tomatoes. And then they're also one of my favorite things to grow, to eat. And, um, you know, in the last 13 years, um, I've really tried all different types of varieties. So these are ones that grow well here. Um, and I like to do um, different colors and different types. Um, ones that you're not going to see in the big box stores. Um, they just sell better here and I really want to get people, you know, open to different varieties and try new things. So um, these I'm going to start with are the beef style um, type of tomatoes. These are the big heirlooms. They get anywhere from 10 to over a pound. Some will even get two pounds, like these mortgage lifters. Um, I am not very good with names, so a lot of them I'm just going to show you um, the names because I'll just like butcher the names. But this one here is a mortgage lifter. Super sweet. They grow really well. Um, I live in 9B, so we have you know pretty warm, dry summers and a long growing season. So you know we'll have tomatoes. You know. We don't get a frost until sometimes uh, November. So you can have them all the way until October, especially cherries, they'll grow until October. But let's start with, you know, the mortgage lifters. These are really just kind of a, a red, um, pink variety. Aunt Ruby's German Green. Again, these are just a nice uh, big beef steak and they're green inside. Uh, Dr. Witchy Yellow. These are um, more of an orange and they are orange flesh inside. This is one of my favorites, a uh, big classic um, hillbilly. Now they have like red until yellow tops and inside the flesh is kind of red to yellow inside. This one here. This is a thicker skin tomato. They don't get as big, um, but they're super tasty. And actually, if like I was just growing a few varieties, this would definitely be one of them. And then this is just a classic brandy wine, just a big red tomato. Another classic. Cherokee purple and this one has like a reddish purple skin and the flesh is more of a deep uh, red slight purple. Here's just another one, um, a beef steak. So I sold over uh, almost a thousand dollars worth of tomatoes and pepper seedlings last spring and people really wanted more kind of just regular um, red tomatoes so I just got a few uh, extra ones. Actually here is a new girl. It is a hybrid. They are a little bit of smaller tomato. And then let's move on to, I just have a few paste tomatoes. Um, they don't sell very well. Um, the thing I like about paste tomatoes is they're very um, diverse. So you can eat them and slice them, you can cook them. They have a lot of flesh. So here's one good variety that grows good here. And you can see they're kind of long and they have a point to them. Another classic is the Amish paste. Now these kind of get more of a fatter tomato, speckled Roma. Okay, so now let's go on the cherries. I'm not really sure why I have so many cherries. They don't sell as well as the big ones, 
but I'm always hopeful because like cherries are one of the first ones that come on. They're the one, the last ones to, to grow and um, they're super yummy. When I was at the farm, we grew a lot of cherries and we would do like rainbow pints. Um, so these are just, you know, some of my favorites. Um, you can never go wrong with a sun gold. They're just, you know, a little round uh, orange tomato. Super 100s. So these are a tinier um, cherry, red, a red pearl, which is um, more like a pear shape. Kind of like this one. This one's a yellow pear, a white cherry, super sweet. And they're kind of like, they're not really white. They're like a yellow. This is actually one of my favorites. And then here's another black cherry. You can never go wrong with these. Now, a few years ago, um, these variegated tomatoes came out. And um, actually, these uh, Lucky Tigers are one of my favorites. The Pink Bumblebee. The Bush. The Sunrise Bumblebee. Now I think this one has more of an orange to red color. This was a newer one, but I thought I'd try it. Well that's it for the tomatoes. So let's move on to peppers. I mainly only grow sweet peppers. Now I have never really done terribly good with the peppers, even at the farm. They would kind of get small and then get sunburned um, just because there was so much sun. But hands down, these are my favorite. Um, and these are sweet peppers and they're super yummy. And then usually it'll be um, kind of like Italian fryers. So here's another one that I like. And then um, people were asking for some bell peppers. So here's another bell pepper. And then um, people were asking for some hot peppers. So um, this here's some um, jalapenos. And then um, when I was looking at the catalog, I was like, okay, this one sounds good. Or this one. I'm not really a hot pepper fan. And then um, for eggplant, like I won't grow any eggplant for myself, but I was thinking again to sell to the public. Some of my favorite is this fairy tale. Now these kind of stay small and sometimes they're different colors. And here was another small one. And then, you know, there's classic like the Black Beauties, which are just like a big Italian one. Then um, sometimes I'll have grown like Asian ones that are long and purple, but I don't have any. Now the tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant, I will start in uh, January under a heat pad, under lights, because they take the longest. And I actually find that peppers and eggplant take much longer um, to get to a good size than even the tomatoes. You can even plant like tomatoes in like April and they'll still do just fine. Well, here is some cucumbers, some of my favorite ones. These white wonders, the lemon cucumbers, they, they can always get them to grow. I don't really see that they taste any different as long as you pick them when um, they're like this really pale color. When they start getting yellow, they get bitter. And then the Armenian yard longs, which actually isn't, I guess, a cucumber. It's like a melon. But they are by far my favorite 
never fail you can get a hundred of these from a couple of plants and then um, here's an American yard long these are kind of furry and then this one here again this one is like a thin skin even though it's like bumpy thin skin um, crispy so these are some of my favorite I actually haven't had any luck with like pickling cucumbers or like the American type. They just seem to always get like too big too fast and then they're just too bitter. So um, we just, I just stay with these ones. So beets and radishes are something I grow in my small garden. Um, hands down for radishes is the French breakfast radishes. The thing I found about these is they, they never get overripe. Like some other radishes, they'll get like um, hollow and um, like soft or just get really big and split. These ones, I mean, they can go, uh, you know, um, it says 25 days. They can go 40 days. They might get big, but they're still good. Now for beets, um, I have a variety here. Um, hands down, these are my favorite. And then classic, like the red um, bull's blood, just a classic red round beet. Um, the another thing I like are these white beets. And the nice thing about these is they're still super sweet but you don't have to worry about like the mess. And then these are just some fun classic ones. I find that these don't grow as well as some of these other varieties of beets, but I eat the beet greens and then I'll eat the beets, some beans. So my favorite beans are um, these flat Italian beans, um, these purple potted poles. Um, there's also like a burgundy one that are really good. And then there is like, um, a green flat bean, but they get long. They get like four inches or so. And as long as you pick them before the bean, um, forms inside the pod, they're super yummy. These, um, rattlesnake beans. The thing about these is, um, they can get really big and still be nice and tender. Now for some brassicas. Kohlrabi is probably my favorite cool season vegetable. They come like these purple varieties and a white variety. I find here the purple ones do better. Um, the white ones seem to split more. Um, but these are definitely my favorite and you know the kohlrabi you can see they're kind of like a ball kind of like a turnip that grows on top of the soil and it tastes like a broccoli stem um, and I usually eat it raw so I just peel it and eat it raw it's nice and crunchy but you can cook it and stir fry um, probably roast it but definitely my favorite is just peel and eat it raw. Now broccoli. Now my small garden, I'll grow a few broccolis. Um, they don't really grow that great of heads, but um, they do really good side shoots. And these are two varieties that have always really done well, even at the farm. And then this one here. And then some cabbage. So this type of cabbage here um, is my favorite. And then this is kind of just a classic one. I don't grow too much cabbage um, just because they take up so much space and you can buy like an organic cabbage for like a couple of dollars. So I usually don't grow um, too much of that. I don't grow cauliflower at all because even when I was at the farm, we always struggled growing cauliflower. So I'm not even going to grow it. Um, 
I am going to start, even these like cool season, I am going to start extra seeds to sell to the community. Um, I find here that even like the good nurseries don't have very good variety. And um, I've always done well um, selling them. Okay, here's some more greens. So some, I always like to have some mustard greens. I like to mix it into kind of a braising mix. Um, so here's one type of mustard greens. Actually, this is probably one of my favorite kind of mustard greens. Um, I always like a little arugula. I love, um, I love grilled cheese with arugula. So I always like to keep that on hand. This spinach. This is the one I find does the best here. These are nice, great, big leaves. Um, it's always seem to do well. And then this here is kind of like um, bok choy. And um, it's definitely one of my favorites to have in the braising mix. And then you got kale. Kale is one of my favorite things. I feel like you should always have kale growing in your garden and you pretty much can no matter where you are um, in the country. You might need to have it in a greenhouse or um, under cover, but it's really hardy. Now, you know, one of my favorites is this one here. Sometimes it's called dino kale. Uh, this is a new one. This is kind of similar to the other one, but it's more tender. Then you've got the classic, like Red Russian. This one's here is nice because of the dark purple, but it doesn't grow that well here, or at least for me. This was another nice kale because it's nice and tender. This was a new one I thought I'd try. And then some collards. So I like to make stuffed cabbage with collards instead of cabbage leaves. And um, it's just so much easier. So I always have a couple of collard plants growing. I'll also put it in my braising mix. Here is some extras that I put in my little garden with carrots. Actually, this is one of my favorite varieties of carrots. I feel like if I can get carrots to grow, like I'm a gardener, um, they've actually been doing really well in my raised beds the last couple of years. Um, the garden, they kind of struggled. Um, on the farm part, they would do, do well, but in the garden there, they didn't do so well. These are um, the sugar snap peas are the only peas that I'll grow. And I find peas are just snacking. They don't even ever make it in the house. Um, I never seem to be able to grow enough to really like have enough to take, you know, home and or in the house to, to make a dish. They really just get, get eaten right there in the garden. So here for summer squash or zucchini type, this is actually my favorite. It's like this pale, um, green one and it doesn't vine out this is more of a bushy um, summer squash and then this is just a, a zucchini I also really like the patty pans or they're calling these ones scallop onions now this isn't like my normal variety of onions to really get good storage onions, you have to really start them from seed, which can be really difficult. Um, they must have not had any of the onions seeds that I prefer, but I like the Walla Wallas or uh, Sweet Spanish. Um, you know, in a small garden, I just kind of put them all over in between things. So then to flowers, now I am not a big flower person. I don't really know much about flowers. Um, so I just have a few handfuls. 
My standard are nasturtiums because they'll be one of the very first things that kind of come up. And then I grow a lot of calendula, but it's one of those things like once you get it in the garden, it just comes back every year, so I don't have any seeds. Um, and then this year I did um, hollyhock, and I actually still see it blooming out there in the garden. And it's just one of these things my grandma had. So I bought some seeds and then just some marigolds. And these ones are really small um, lemon gems. And here is some fun sunflowers. I usually throw sunflowers just kind of around. And then last year I got some poppies um, and put in my rock garden. And I noticed that they're already coming up and there's like thousands of them. Well, that's pretty much it um, for the seeds that I have. And this is a lot of seeds for like five raised beds that I have. Um, but a lot of these I will start and sell. And um, it's one of those things like once a farmer, kind of always a farmer, it becomes hard just to grow a few. So I grow a few for everybody. Um, I really enjoy seeds. Um, it was always one of the things I did at the farm is starting the seeds. Um, so it's definitely, I enjoy starting seeds and harvesting, planting not so much or prepping soil or compost was not really um, my thing. I do really enjoy my compost at home, but I didn't at the farm. Um, and hopefully soon I will have a bigger garden, but right now just have the five raised beds and, um, you know, share with the community. Well, thank you. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please uh, subscribe and click that like button. And um, come back to um, my channel because hopefully I will have a new big adventure that I would love to share with all of you.